Hello, somebody say amen. Amen. My God. Lord have mercy. You know what happens when you fall asleep? The snake gets you. A lot of ways to fall asleep. I'm not talking about just... I'm talking about spiritually sleeping. You fell asleep on the Lord. You fell asleep on His work, on His love that you had for Him. The snake gets you. It's like walking through high weeds. And you're not paying attention. You walk through those weeds a hundred times. But this time, the snake was waiting. And you, because you weren't paying attention, because you took the weeds for granted, you stepped on the snake and he got you. Oh, somebody say, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I've seen it happen. Oh, not literally, but I've seen it happen. Where they took their eyes off of Jesus and they just taken church for granted. Fellowship for granted, everything for granted, and the next thing you know, they're backslid, and the next thing you know, they get bit by the snake. And that venom gets into them. Sometimes it's hard to work your way back. Mm. Come on, somebody. Hard to work back. Some of them, I just I don't know what to do. I just told them what to do. Come back to your first love. That's it. Swallow that pride. Yes. Be humble before the Lord. And God will see you through. Trust me. God don't want you to backslide. God don't want you to stay backslidden. And for sure he don't want you to go to hell. He said I get no pleasure out of the death of the wicked. But all would come to repentance of sin. That's what God's desire is for you. How many still glad you came? Let me see. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 13 verses 11 and 12. And that knowing the time. That now with high, is high time to awake out of our sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. Paul's talking here, time to wake up. Amen? In other words, some of them fell asleep. He said it's time, it's high time to wake up out of your sleep, out of that slumber. Out of that laziness. Out of taking God and things for granted. Mm -hmm. Your salvation is closer than when you first believed. Every day we're inching closer and closer to eternity. Every day, in other words, we're, we're getting closer and closer to His coming. Yes. Or our dying. Either way, we're going to meet Him. Amen? And I'll take either one. Because for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. I can't lose either way. But if I'm backslidden, if I ain't living for God, it's a big loss. It's a big loss. And it goes on to say, the night is far spent. Hear me now. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let, listen, let us put on the armor of light. <clears throat> God looks at this as an armor of light. We see in Ephesians 6 the armor of God. But it's also now the armor of light. The armor of light brings you and keeps you out of that dark place. Mm. That's a new term now people are using. Oh, they're in a dark place. Yeah, it's a good one. Because that's where they're at. Anything other than being in the light is dark. <clears throat> Come on. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 19. Holding faith. Holding what? Faith. Holding faith. And a good conscience. Ah, I remember something. Years ago, somebody asked me, said, Preacher, he said, I've got to get an operation. I said, what are you going to get operated on? He said, my conscience. I said, your what? He said, my conscience. My conscience is driving me crazy. It's tormenting me. i got to get it out. I said, man, that's not how you do it, bro. Ain't no operation for your conscience other than Jesus. I said, let him operate on you. He'll give you a clean conscience. He'll take away the shame, the guilt, the pain. Because that's what causes a bad conscience, isn't it? Sin. Yes. That's it. He's the cure for sin. Amen. So that's what he's saying here. Hold faith and a good conscience. Good conscience is important. Because when you have a bad conscience, you can't serve God right. That's right. 
That's why people, I hear Christians say, I don't feel worthy. This is why. You've allowed the devil to mess with your conscience. Your mind is on everything else but Jesus. Everything else but the Word. But through faith in God, loving Him, serving Him, you get a good conscience. Amen. You feel clean. When you need to repent, you repent. And the blood, oh, glory be. Yes. Thank God for the yes. blood of Jesus. Yes. The blood that cleanses you, yes. sanctifies you. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. The Holy Spirit ministers to you. Yes. Then He's able to minister through you. Yes. Too many Christians are needy, needy, needy. Me, 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 my, my, my. And they're not able, not capable because of a bad conscience to minister out. That's another trick and a lie from the devil. He wants to keep you so tormented in your conscience that you don't feel worthy that you can minister to other people. Because you know you're hiding something or you're being a hypocrite. And if you feel like that, you just got to repent. Apply the blood. Yes. Yeah. Ask for God's forgiveness. Ask for God's cleansing, His mercy, His grace. And then go get them Amen. in the name of Jesus. Don't sit there and let Amen. them beat you up. Amen. The devil will tor torment you. You'll never have a clear conscience. Mm -hmm. Talk you right out of serving God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Holding faith and a good conscience, which listen, which some, having put away, mm -hmm. concerning faith, having made themselves shipwrecked. Shipwrecked. You know what happens when people get shipwrecked out in the sea? They drown. 90% of the time they drown. They die. What a horrible death. Fear. Anxiety. All those things kick in when you know that ship is sinking. I know some right now, they're shipwrecked. They used to be sitting right where you're sitting. Loving Jesus. Ministering to others. Some sang, some played instruments, some gave testimony, gave out tracts, fed the poor, paid their tithes, shipwrecked. Because they took their eyes off of God too long. And the devil got a hold of them, that snake in the grass. Don't be next. Don't be one of them. And I'm not judging them. I feel for them. I pray for them. That's what you should do. But I don't want to see another one go out the door and not come back. And I'm not talking about just a church. I'm talking about Jesus, serving Christ. Stop cold turkey. And sometimes it doesn't happen just overnight. You can see it coming. Sometimes I can discern when people are hurting or lukewarm or backslidden. And they're just sitting in the pew going through the motions. But they're dead. Their eyes are dead. It's darkness. Their soul is empty. Mm, 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 going through the motions until finally they just can't take it no more and they give up. They quit. Don't ever quit on the Lord because the Lord will never quit on you. Amen. 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 People will quit on them. Mm -hmm. They get Amen. their what? Their conscience. They can't take it no more because they're slipping, sliding, moving, grooving, doing all kinds of things. Slop and stroll will ruin your soul. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. Mm. Shipwreck. Coming in for a landing. This is it. Last scripture. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest. Arise from the dead. Oh. When you look at that at the church, the dead. He's talking about dead in works. He's talking about dead while you're alive. You've heard it. How many times have you heard they're walking dead? Yes. Yeah. A lot of Christians are walking dead. Church people walking dead. Dead works. Dead in their faith. What's he say? Awake. Out of your sleep. Out of your slumber. Come on. Get with it. Stop blaming God for your problems. Stop being so negative. Where's the faith? Everything we said to faith, faith, faith. You can't please God without it. You can't get nothing without it that's worth having. Right. It takes faith. The shield of faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. Something to fight off those fiery darts. Those lies. Those, those temptations. Those things that come to you. By the bunches. Yes. By the bunches. Mm -hmm. I hope and pray today.
something said and done. Stand with me as we close and, and pay close attention to what I say next. This is what I started out with. This is what I want to finish with. This is what the Lord put on my heart for a couple of weeks now. He said, you tell my people that I am not pleased with empty altars. I had to meditate on that for a minute. I know what you mean. The altar's here. Part of it. Part of it's here. He said, I want to see sacrifices on my altar. Well, we know we don't do sacrifices and animal sacrifices anymore. He said, no. My people are the sacrifice. Yes. I want them to sacrifice their lives at the altar. Yes. Not necessarily this altar. Oh, that'd be fine. Wherever you pray, wherever you make an altar of prayer and worship and honoring God is the altar. Yes. And you're the sacrifice on it. God wants you, all of you. You've heard me say it before, 99% won't do because the Bible said a little leaven leavens a whole lump. He wants you to sacrifice your life by trusting Him, by honoring Him, by loving Him, by serving Him, by worshiping Him, by praising Him. Lay it all on the altar. Find a place at home. Find a place and make it your altar. And watch things change for the better. Watch the blessings come down. When the praise goes up and the prayers go up, the blessings come down. Stop complaining and murmuring and giving them your Santa Claus list. You ain't going to do nothing about it. Because that's not faith. But when you start praising Him and when you get in trouble, you don't murmur, you love Him, you praise Him, you worship Him. And watch the healings take place. Watch the deliverance to take place. Watch all the broken hearts take place. Yes, Lord. You have to have an altar. Yes, That's what God said. Find a place. I don't care if it's by the side of your bed. I don't care where it's at. Just you and God alone. Amen. Praise God. We only got a few seconds left. We never close out the service without giving everybody an opportunity to repent. Opportunity to accept Christ if they need to. We dedicate it to YouTube. People watch them by way of internet. We get people talking all the time. People coming to Jesus. People enjoying the sermons. We don't know who's listening, who's watching. We only know that we ain't taking no chances. We give everybody the opportunity. Let's all pray this prayer together if you mean it from your heart. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, come I come in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. I, ask you, Lord, I ask you, Lord, forgive all my, forgive all my sins. Come into my heart. Into my life, save my soul, and make me whole. Lord, I love you. I'm going to make an altar to bring you glory. Use me. Don't refuse me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now praise him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.